In today's Thinkorswim tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take the RSI indicator and plot it directly on your charts instead of a lower panel indicator. This helps you save not only all of the space down here, gives you back that chart real estate, but it also allows you to focus on just the signals you care about and see them directly with price action so you don't have to worry about too many lines, too many indicators, anything of that sort. Gives you just the information you care about when you need it. Now to get started, I've loaded in the RSI indicator on my chart. This is the built-in RSI indicator. You can find that inside of your Thinkorswim platform, and that's the one I have loaded on my chart. Now once you have that loaded, click the scroll icon with the lock in order to bring up the actual code inside of the RSI indicator. Now I'm going to break down this code first for all of you that are unfamiliar with ThinkScript, before we create our own indicator with just the buy and sell arrows. Now to get started, we can see line number five is our first line of code, which says declare lower. Declare lower is our way of telling Thinkorswim that, hey, this indicator should always be plotting on the lower panel charts. If instead of lower, you had said declare upper, then that would mean, hey, plot this indicator always on our price panel charts instead of the lower panel. So that's declare lower versus declare upper. Now lines seven through 12 here are the input variables. Input variables are the ones that the user can change directly from the study settings menu. What I mean by that is if I click cancel here and instead of opening up the code, I had just double clicked the RSI indicator, you would see all of these different settings which you can change directly without needing to go inside of the code. If instead of a length of 14, you wanted to make this say a length of 20, I can type in 20 here, click OK, and you'll notice the indicator automatically adjusts down here below. So that's what the studying, so that's what the study settings menu are. It allows you to change all of these input variables directly from the study settings without needing to come inside of the code. Think of them as things you can change. Now the next set of uh, lines that we have in our code, 14 through 16, are the actual calculations for the RSI. These calculations, you'll see the last one, change ratio, then funnels into our RSI variable, which is on line number 18. Now one thing should stand out here. These three calculations have def variables. The bottom RSI calculation has a plot variable. The def variables are definitions and they don't appear on our chart. The plot variable, however, you can actually see plotting directly on your charts. You can see that with the RSI line here and that's the difference between def and plot. Plot you can actually see visually, defs are the calculations taking place behind the scenes, but you don't necessarily need to see that on your chart. Now after that, you'll notice two static variables here, both plots as well an oversold and an overbought variable, and both of these are tied directly to the two variables we set up here in the input. For our overbought, we have overbought equals 70, and for our oversold, we have oversold is equal to 30, and that's what's plotting these lines that you see on our chart. So we configure the two levels up here. Those two levels are then called down here in the oversold and overbought plot variables, and that's how we see the horizontal line. Now the last set of variables that we have here are the up signal and the down signal. Again, both plots, and these are the arrows that we see on our chart. Now you can see here what the condition is for those arrows to actually appear. If the RSI crosses above the oversold level, that's the static level that, remember, we just said we set from the input field, then we're going to see an arrow plotting at the oversold mark, and that's this green arrow that we see right down here. That's the up signal, and if I come down, you'll see we also give it some formatting parameters here. One is if the user has selected show breakout signals, that's the last input variable, only then do we want to see these arrows, otherwise don't show them. And you can also see we do things like configure the colors right down here along with if this is an up or down arrow. Now for the down signal, you'll see the opposite, so the color is a down tick and the arrow is plotting down. We don't necessarily care right now for the purposes of this exercise about the RSI, but in case you're curious, you can also find all of the different formatting that takes place right here and when you'll see this line change color, if at all. Now, using all of this, we've now understood the RSI indicators code. 
but we need to actually use that knowledge to create our own indicator where the RSI plots directly on the upper panel. So to do that, we come back into our study settings menu, and now we're going to click create here to start writing our own indicator. I'll click create. We can remove all of the code inside of this. And now let's first bring in the up signal that we had inside of the RSI. So there I'll say something like def up is equal to, and now we need to first reference the RSI indicator. So here I'll say RSI, I'll give this a parenthesis since this is a built-in indicator and we want to reference a specific variable. Then I will press the period key here, which means, okay, now we're going to call something specific from inside of the RSI indicator. And here, the variable we cared about for the up is the up signal. Now you'll see this compiles and the up signal is the exact same name that the RSI code has given that plot variable. It's called plot up signal. And that's why we're calling that on the RSI function here. You cannot call any of the def variables here if you were to do this period approach. It needs to be the plot variables. So that's a key thing to keep in mind here. The plot variables are the ones which we can tie to the RSI and we can reference them in any of our custom code here. Now I'll repeat the same thing for the down variable. So I'll say RSI down signal, and that is the two different sets of buy and sell arrows that we have on our chart. Now if I simply clicked OK and apply, you would see that we have, first of all, the study is red. And if I click apply, absolutely nothing appears on our chart. If I come back to the scroll uh, menu and we go into our code, you'll see here the error message. At least one plot should be defined. So now if we say something like plot up, uh, plot let's just say as the actual variable name, so it's a little bit different. And I'll simply feed in this up value that we had right here. And if I click apply, you should still see absolutely nothing on our charts. In order to see something, we need to now give the formatting for this up plot. So I'll say up plot dot set painting strategy parentheses. And now we can say painting strategy dot boolean arrow up. And I close that out. Now, if I click apply, you'll notice we start to see some arrows on our chart. So now that we've specified how we want to see this up arrow actually plotting, we want it to be a Boolean arrow up, we can see the arrows appearing on our chart the way we would expect. Now I'll repeat this for our down plot as well. So I'll simply say is equal to down. And now we're going to follow something similar, down plot dot set painting strategy. And now we're going to give this a painting strategy of Boolean arrow down. And if I click apply, that will then allow us to see the cell arrows as well. You should notice these line up exactly where we can see the lower panel's RSI indicator along with the buy and sell arrows. Now, one thing that's missing here is the scenario in which, let's say, you wanted to adjust the length from 14 to something else. Now, we can copy these input variables. That's one way. But then we would need to bring in all of these calculations, the entire code. A smarter way to do this is to instead pass whatever variables we'd like as parameters into our custom code here. So the way we can do that is first recognizing that the RSI has one, two, three, four, five, and six different parameters that we can customize, and they go in this order. So let's say you wanted to change the overbought, oversold uh, parameter. You can't simply come into our RSI indicator here and instead of 70 type in 80 and expect that the RSI would know that, hey, you're referring to the oversold level and you want that to be 80 or overbought, excuse me. We need to go in this specific order here. So the way we can do that is by, say we wanted the length to be 14, we wanted the overbought level to be 80 instead of 70, we wanted the remaining parameters to still be 30, and let's say the last three are close, wilders, and yes, then we don't even need to specify them. So here I've changed, uh, I've left the first uh, length as still 14, but we've changed the over bot variable, the second one, the parameter, and we've left that 30 mark as the same. So technically we don't need this one as well. But let's say we wanted to change just the length here. That's only the first parameter, so there I could get away with doing something like 20, 
And that would then tell the RSI indicator, or the code rather, that when we pull the RSI, the first parameter needs to be set to 20, and it so happens that the first parameter is the actual length field here. So again, if we wanted to change all three of these integer values, we could do something like 20, maybe we want 80 as our overbought level, and maybe we want 20 as our oversold level. Now, if we were to use this, and I'll paste this in for our down signal as well, if I click apply, and we come in and we change the parameters on the actual RSI so we can test this. So we said 20, 80, 20 were the two values we changed this to. We can see we don't have any arrows plotting. Now what happens if we say change this back to 70 and 30? I'll click apply. Now we can see arrows, but that also means we need to come in and change the parameters here. Now this is a little test for you if you're following along to see how well you understand this. Our parameters here are 20, 70, 30. Now, you can either change these two variables, the 80 and the 20, to also be 70 and 30. And I can do that right down here as well. And if I now click Apply, you should notice that the arrows are lining up the way we would expect. We see two arrows here. We see two arrows up here. One's hiding behind the chart bubble. You can see two arrows right here. And we can see the same two arrows plotting right up here. But another way we could also do this, which might save you a little bit of time, is by simply just specifying the length and removing these other two parameters, the 70 and the 30, since they're the exact same as the default values of the RSI indicator. And now we still see those arrows plotting the way we would like. So I know we went through a lot there, but the key idea here is specify the parameters that you would like to be different compared to the default RSI values that Thinkorswim gives to you. The default is this set right here, 14, 70, 30, close, wilders, yes. And that's what the RSI, if you specified absolutely nothing, will use. But if you wanted to change any of those parameters, then you can specify them right here. That goes for the moving averages as well. Now, the last thing we can do on this tutorial, which hopefully has uh, showed you how to use the RSI a little bit better on the upper panel, is by increasing the uh, size of these arrows. So for that, we can say weight, And there, I can give this a weight of 5. And I'll repeat the same for the down plot. So I'll say weight, Give this a weight of 5. And now, take a look to see what happens to the arrows on our chart. If I click Apply, you'll notice they got much bigger. 5 is the largest weight that you can choose, and this might be obnoxiously large. So if we say bring this down to something like a 3 instead, that should make these arrows a little bit more manageable, but they're also easier to see. So one more time, a quick recap of what we did here. We took our RSI indicator, which traditionally plots on the lower panel right down here, and we instead brought that up to our upper panel charts. Now, when we did that, we simply referred to the up and down signal here, and we created two different def variables. Now, to actually see them on our chart, we took those def variables and we plugged them into two different plot variables, which have a different name here, and all they're doing is they're setting themselves equal to the up and down variables up here. We then gave Thinkorswim a way to uh, plot these on our charts. In this case, we set an up and a down arrow. And we also gave it a weight so it was a little easier to see on our charts. We also covered how you can input specific parameters if you'd like to show something different than the default RSI that we have on our charts. And the way we do that is by specifying those individual parameters from that input field in the RSI as different parameters into this RSI function here. If we wanted to change the length from 14 to 20, all we had to do was write 20, since that was the very first parameter. But let's say you wanted the length to be 14, but you wanted to change anything else beyond the first parameter. Then you needed to make sure to specify in this order, starting with the 14 and then adjusting whichever variables you'd like, and keep going down the line from left to right. I'll bring this back to the default here, and you can play around with this so you get a better feel for how Thinkorswim works with the ThinkScript coding uh, functionality. And I think through trial and error, you should get a much better use case of the RSI on the upper panel. One more thing I'll add before I conclude this. 
By default, Thinkorswim will plot this on the upper panel, but if you wanted to go out of your way to specify that, we could add in a declare upper here, and that will tell Thinkorswim to always plot this new study on the upper panel charts. I hope you found this quick ThinkScript tutorial to be useful in understanding how to plot a lower panel indicator directly on the upper panel. Take care everyone, good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.